It's a fascinating topic as to how the sciences entered Russia, uh, entered Russian culture. And uh, we're familiar with the idea that science was introduced into Russia by Tsar Peter I, Peter the Great. Um, that Russia didn't have a, a scientific tradition before the 18th century, but during the 18th century, Peter introduced science through an academy which he founded and which opened in 1725. But how the academy and how the sciences actually became a part of Russian culture was a, a complicated story. It was quite a fraught affair. And one of the fascinating things about that story is that spectacle and performance were key elements of the way that the scientists who were involved in it uh, in, managed to get uh, the Russian government and the Russian court to take the sciences seriously. So Peter the Great wanted to um, bring more uh, Western European style culture to Russia, um, partly to improve the military. He was involved in the Great Northern War with Sweden and he had to modernise the army to, to win that war. Um, and so he founded a city, St. Petersburg, and produced, uh, introduced many different reforms that uh, Europeanized Russian culture. Um, and one, one of those was to introduce Western science. So he organised with the help of uh, the German philosopher Gottfried Leibniz and his um, students and followers, he organised an academy of sciences that opened in St. Petersburg in 1725. Um, the people who were brought there came from Germany, from France, they were very well paid, some of them were quite famous. Um, and all things look good. But unfortunately, Peter died. And so he, as the main patron of the academy, was no longer there to protect it. And just as the uh, academicians had arrived in Petersburg, so the fate of their institution and of Western science in Russia suddenly hung in the balance. So what the academy had to do in its first years was very quickly come up with ways to secure a place for it. And a lot of people at this time were very hostile to the idea of bringing Western science into Russia. The Orthodox Church was sceptical, although, although probably not as sceptical as it's sometimes made out to be. Um, and, but there were lots of nobles as well who thought that Peter's reforms had been a, a going, taking Russia in the wrong direction and they wanted to go back to the old Muscovite ways of doing things before Peter's reforms. And that included getting rid of these academicians and their and their sciences. Now, um, the academicians very quickly tried to figure out ways to enamour themselves with the Russian court, uh, which at this time, and we're talking about the 1720s and uh, 30s here, uh, was located in St. Petersburg. For a while they were okay, whilst Peter's widow Catherine was on the Russian throne. Um, but in the beginning of the 1730s, there was a new empress, Anna Ivanovna, and uh, she didn't automatically have a, any particular interest in the sciences. So what should you do? How should you secure your academy in this, in this situation and your, your scientific activities? Well, uh, the academicians uh, were led by a man named uh, Johann Daniel Schumacher. And Schumacher was originally from um, Alsace, uh, and he'd come to Russia as Peter's librarian uh, and chief scientific advisor. Um, and he was the secretary of the academy. And he was a very smart man in understanding what needed to be done to try and secure the place of the academy and the sciences in Russia. And I think what Schumacher realised was that doing science was not going to get the court very interested in the academy. So whereas in the 1720s um, people had done lectures about Newtonian physics and Leibniz's uh, mathematics and so on, uh, that really declined in the 1730s. And instead what Schumacher concentrated on was hiring people who could perform um, activities that would be of interest to Anna Ivanovna's court. Chief among those interests and very unusually for an Academy of Sciences in this period, was the composition of fireworks displays. So Peter the Great had introduced uh, Western fireworks designs and displays into Petersburg as a way of celebrating the, 
the monarch and, uh, and the state. And some of these were triumphs, so you set off lots of fireworks to celebrate a victory against the, the Swedes or the Turks. Uh, some of them were done to celebrate royal birthdays or, or uh, marriages or, or the new year. And they were very, very grand spectacles. Gunpowder was cheap in Russia at that time, so you could produce spectacular fireworks. And they were set off um, around very elaborate scenery. And they weren't like fireworks displays today, where you just have images in the sky, uh, lots of lights and colour. But they were more like plays in which there was a narrative and a story and lots of symbolism, uh, all telling about the greatness of, of Russia and the, and the Tsar. But you needed expertise in order to write those narratives and understand uh, how to compose uh, stories using all of the symbolic um, uh, iconography that, that fireworks displays required. And in Russia, there was no one who could do that. And Schumacher understood that. And so he started to hire new academicians who were really good at designing fireworks. He found a gentleman named uh, Juncker who could do that and another called Stalin. And Juncker and Stalin and others in the academy started to produce these very elaborate compositions of um, fireworks uh, for staging to celebrate the Russian court and the Empress Anna Ivanovna. This in fact is one of the things that the first Russian scientist Mikhail Lomonosov did as a young man. So he would design illuminations and fireworks for the court. Um, Schumacher also hired people to write poetry for the court, uh, odes to celebrate the, uh, the Empress, um, for example, um, and um, all kinds of artistic departments that would produce the kinds of things that the court might be interested in having. And this was a very successful strategy. So by the end of the 1730s, 1739, um, the academy was in a very good position because it had um, set itself up to provide all of these services to the court, who ultimately controlled its fate, um, and, uh, and the court was happy to support it. But then something unfortunate happened. Anna Ivanovna um, died and was replaced uh, after a little while by the daughter of Peter the Great, Elizabeth Petrovna, Elizaveta Petrovna. And she became Empress Elizabeth, and she really had a problem with Anna Ivanovna and all of the uh, foreign courtiers who had grown up uh, with her and, and become a part of her retinue, uh, led by a, a man named Ernst Buren, uh, who was considered an absolute uh, 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 disaster for, for Russia. So Elizabeth set about getting rid of all of the nobles and anyone closely associated with Anna's court and replacing them with Russians and French uh, individuals who were in her favour. And that was very bad news for Schumacher because he just spent 10 years building up a close connection to Anna's court because he wanted the academy and the sciences to survive in Russia. And in fact, Schumacher was quickly arrested under Elizabeth's rule and uh, there was an investigation into him in which he was accused of all kinds of terrible deeds and embezzlement and corruption and so on. But it turns out that in the end, uh, Schumacher survived partly through his connections to people like Jakob von Stalin, who was one of these designers of court spectacle. And one might argue that what Elizabeth realised over time, or what her courtiers realised over time, was that they still needed the spectacular skills of the academy, albeit that they should be transformed to celebrate Elizabeth and not Anna. Um, and so Schumacher ultimately was released, and uh, in the early 1740s, uh, or in the 1740s, a charter was established for the academy, which set in law that the academy was, had a right to uh, exist and operate on particular terms. Uh, and that meant that was a key moment because it meant that the academy was finally secure in Russia. And so what we're seeing in this story is the way that spectacle and the ability to design fireworks, of all things, actually played an important role in securing a place for science in Russian culture.